Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar as part of our cost of living campaign. I'm Laura Jameson, and I'm the Prevention Coordinator for Trading Standards Scotland. Our campaign has been running throughout September and will continue into early October and is looking to raise awareness of potential scams linked to the ongoing cost of living crisis. As prices and bills continue to rise, many consumers will have financial worries heading into autumn and winter. Scammers may attempt to exploit these anxieties and to target people online and via cold calls, emails and text messages in an attempt to obtain their personal details and bank account information. So today we're going to be talking about financial scams and I'd like to warmly welcome our panel and um, thank you both for joining us. And if I can invite you both to just say a little bit about yourselves and um, if you'd like to start, please, Jenny. Thank you very much, Laura. Hi, thank you for inviting me along today. My name is Jenny and I am the Financial Wellbeing Manager for Money Advice Scotland. Money Advice Scotland is a national charity that seeks to promote financial wellbeing and we do that by um, really focusing on three main audiences. We have our advice community, people who are delivering debt and money advice, we have policy makers and then we have the general public in different communities in Scotland. Thanks, Jenny. Um, Lucy, if I can hand over to you, please. Thanks, Laura. Um, uh, yes, hello. So Lucy Carstein, I head up our Financial Promotions and Enforcement Task Force uh, at the Financial Conduct Authority. Um, quite a wide range uh, and remit of work within the department. So sort of uh, everything um, that's within the perimeter uh, and, and potentially um, some less scrupulous, shall we say, uh, advertisements going out by regulated firms, but I think really importantly, everything outside the perimeter as well uh, that may be deemed to be um, unauthorised um, unauthorized business. Uh, and within there, there could well be um, illegal uh, and scam type content. Thanks so much, Lucy, and it's great to have you both here today. I think it's fair to say that we've all come across these sorts of scams, but to open discussions, um, Lucy, if I could start with you, please. Which financial scams are of most concern to your organisation, would you say? Uh, I think probably the, the the common sort of financial scams, um, and I'll, I'll sort of rattle through them and we can, we can expand uh, as needed, but um, investment and pension scams. Uh, you know, for example, if you're contacted out of the blue with an investment opportunity, it could well be a scam. Um, particularly against the backdrop of cost of living uh, crisis at the moment, um, loan fee fraud uh, and misleading loan adverts. You know, a typical thing to look out for there is if you're looking for a loan and you're asked to pay an upfront free uh, fee, uh, be warned, um, it, it, it probably um, uh, may not actually turn into a loan uh, coming through into your bank account. Um, we've then got uh, sort of quite a range within, I'll sort of loosely call them the banking and online account scams. Um, you know, such as um, authorised push payment fraud, um, you know, when a person or business is tricked into sending money to to a fraudster um, when they may be posing as a, a, a genuine uh, payee. Um, we've then got uh, money transfer and foreign money transfer scams. Uh, you know, you might be contacted by someone um, to send money on behalf of someone that you don't know. Um, that could be actually money laundering as well. So really need to be uh, careful in that space. Um, and actually, you know, I, I should mention this, but FCA scams where you're contacted by uh, potentially a fraudster pretending to be the FCA and they're asking you to disclose uh, personal information. The FCA would never ask you to disclose the personal information. We wouldn't ask you to transfer money. Uh, and we wouldn't ask for things like pins, passwords, bank accounts. Um, and then finally, um, illegal money lend lending uh, and loan sharks. Um, you know, somebody lends you money, they're not registered um, for um, by the FCA. Um, happy to sort of expand on those in more detail um, and perhaps go through some of the um, some of the things that we should all do to, to try and avoid getting uh, sucked into some of those. Well, that's all fantastic, Lucy, and it's quite frightening the whole breadth of, of the scams that are out there. And I think just going back to what you were saying specifically, you know, around cost of living with the loan fee fraud, I think in terms where people really are at crisis point where they're thinking, I just I need to access extra money. I need to access more cash now to think that there's hope there and to actually be losing money as well as not getting the loan that they thought they were they were going to be receiving. And um, that's that's so 
it's absolutely horrendous um, and really preying on vulnerability. And it'll be great to explore some of these areas further as we go through the webinar. Um, so thank you. Jenny, if I can hand over to you, please, with the same question. Yeah, no problem at all, Laura. Just to lead on from your point about people being in a vulnerable position, we know from research that we conducted a couple of years ago that people in Scotland are waiting until their financial situation is really bad before they reach out for vital help. And so that can presents a concern for us because we are concerned that if people are in that situation and they haven't reached out for help yet, are they then more vulnerable to, you know, being being a victim of a scam like the loan free scams or loan sharks, illegal money lending? In terms of what concerns us and what we see most, um, just to provide you with a little bit of context and what we find generally, we know that we were on the path to becoming digital in the way that we engaged and interacted with and managed our money. But COVID-19 pandemic really accelerated that trend for a lot of people in Scotland. And what we then found was that when we were speaking to different communities, people who had always been going into the bank branch and using cash were then pushed along the path um, of go using online banking. And because of that, we found that there was an increased risk of people becoming victim of a banking scam. And also there's an increased anxiety around about that as well. The general sense that we get is that people don't know what to trust if they get a phone call from the bank. Is it actually the bank or is it a fraudster? And that's a really, really difficult position for people to be put into. Our key demographic, um, when we're talking about who we serve, uh, we are looking for consumers and we are looking for people who have experienced financial detriment. That's really the people that we're most concerned about. And financial scams, and Lucy, you know, you talked about the, the huge range of financial scams that are out there at the moment. Financial scams really have a very detrimental impact on somebody's finances. So if my answer could be all scams, then that would be great. Specifically, uh, banking scams over the past couple of years, and then in recent months, we have been alerted to anxiety and also just the sheer prevalence of scams that are related to the cost of living, uh, in particular, the energy support scheme related scams. Uh, we asked our advice community, the money advisors in Scotland, and they um, answered to say that people, their clients are, are getting text messages to say, click this link, you're eligible for a discount. And it's relating to the £400 that they've seen in the news and they've heard on the radio. And people are clicking on the link and obviously it's it's a um, scam. Interestingly, though, the money advisors that we spoke to are not only reporting that their clients are encountering these types of scams, they're also reporting that they themselves are receiving text messages and emails and that their elderly relatives are also experiencing that as well. So it just shows you they're very, very prevalent at the moment and they're affecting everybody. And I, I think, Jenny, you know, thank you so much for that. The energy support team, that certainly is um, one that we've been experiencing as well. And we've seen that that to be really quite prevalent. And like you're saying, it's again, it's people in that position of vulnerability where having £400 cash in your hand seem, may seem, even if it is going to go to energy bills, it might seem just that wee bit more appealing to have the actual the actual cash as opposed to going straight into your energy account. Um, and I, I think just to touch on um, with what you're saying about the impact that financial scams do have on people, uh, we'd carried out the big Scottish scams survey. And one of the questions we asked was, you know, have you ever lost money to a scam? And um, a number of people came back and said yes. So we asked them to tell us how much that was. And it ranged from, I think it was £37 to 25000 And not to decry the 25000 which is a huge sum of money, but there was one comment that really stood out for me, and it was a consumer who'd written back, he took whatever I had left in my bank account, which was about £100. And that for me, because then I started to think, well, you know, when did this happen? Was it near the end of the month? Were you able to access support? Do you have a family and friends network who can help you out? And you, you just think about people's individual circumstances and how they can actually get by. And I think with that one as well, it just really struck me that how many other people 
are maybe in a similar situation where, where they've had their bank account emptied and they've been left with nothing. Uh, it's It really is, a, I think, a really frightening time and especially it just seems the scammers are preying on consumers' hope that, you know, there is that, you know, there's support there and it, it's easy um, to be become affected by these scams, absolutely. And like you say, um, uh, you know, your support workers, I think we've all had similar text messages or emails telling us about these great offers and, you know, you just need to click the link. Uh, you just need to be so vigilant. And again, it's just taking that time um, to reflect on what's being said and where it's originated from. Um, and just finally, before we move on, I agree entirely about people sort of being forced into online banking and then the weariness of, you know, is it the bank contacting you? Is it not? Um, certainly the bank I'm with is very, um, it's very diligent. And um, the text messages are interesting because they don't actually flash up in my phone. It's not until you actually go into your text messages that you see who it's from. And um, I have had um, transactions paused until they confirm that it is indeed um, it's legitimate. Um, so that's, that's really, really positive. But I understand why some consumers may feel apprehensive or wary. Um, and again, it's sometimes second guessing, or is that the bank? And if I type back yes, what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Um, so I think just if, if we can build on some of the themes that we're talking about here, um, and talking about the, going back to the loan fee fraud, and also, um, Lucy, illegal money lending too. Um, there's reports that illegal money lenders are now moving online as well. Um, so I suppose if we can touch on both sides of that and what should consumers be aware of when looking for loans online and how to avoid potentially getting caught up with illegal money lenders that way? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's um, very much some general things that we should all look out for to avoid scams. And I, I, some of them are um, sort of um, medium uh, uh, agnostic um, and some of them are, are more pertinent to, you know, phone calls or, or things like that. But perhaps, you know, uh, touching on some of the, some of some of those things. So, you know, going back to your text message uh, example, treat all unexpected calls, emails, text message um, messages with extreme caution. Don't assume that they're genuine, um, even if the person seems to know some basic um, information about you. There's, you know, we all leave to a degree a digital footprint um, and, you know, a, a scammer will tap into tap into that. Um, I also think just just going back to, again, something that you uh, mentioned a second ago, but don't be pressured into acting quickly. Um, you know, a genuine bank, a genuine financial services firm, they will be fine if you want to stop, pause and think about these things. Uh, and actually, we we should all sort of, you know, stop, pause and think about these things because we're parting with our money. Um, it's probably a statement of the obvious, but don't ever give out your bank details, um, your credit card information, unless you're absolutely certain who you're dealing with. Um, you know, I would from the FCA say if you're looking at dealing with a, a you know buying a financial product only deal with those firms that are FCA authorized um you know check our register also do check our warning list as well uh, which is updated um uh, pretty much on an hourly basis actually as soon as an alert is issued uh, against uh, a firm who might be committing unauthorized business or some form of um illegal um act double check that do check that make sure that they're not on there um, and then going into sort of perhaps some of the uh, smarter, shall we say, um, scams that we see, um, double, double check the, the, the URL and contact details of anything that comes through, um, just in case that it's a clone firm. So this is a firm that's pretending to be a legitimate firm. There's There will usually be like a, an additional dot or an additional hyphen or something that will distinguish it, so it's not the legitimate um, URL um, that 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 information um, has has come from. Um, and then I think also just finally, you know, do double check your bank accounts, your credit card statements regularly. You know, it could be five pounds taken, two pounds taken, but that can soon rack up. Um, so you know, they are some of the things that we would just sort of call out to to, to be aware of. 
Um, it's by no means an exhaustive list, but they are certainly some of the things that we have seen uh, where people can fall foul. There are some much more uh, complex and in-depth um, scams um, where telephone lines can get hacked, hang up, leave the phone off the hook for hung, you know, hang, hung up for five minutes just to make sure that that line has not been tapped into so that when you pick the phone back up and you think you may have called your legitimate bank, um, it's not still the scammer on the other end of the phone. So they're just um, some, you know, some some things to consider um, to to try and protect yourself in um, in in the situation that we're in. Thank you so much, Lucy. And I think it would be really helpful. And um, what we'll put together is a sort of checklist, a fact list um, for viewers who are watching today. I think it's really helpful. I, I like that messaging to stop, pause, and think. Um, and especially to double check and like you're saying about the FCE register and warning list, that's a really great tool to have access to. And just to, again, it's just taking your time to make sure that you're not going to get caught out by these scammers who maybe are masquerading as a legitimate company. And certainly as well, in terms of clone firms, I think that's really, really important. And one of the things just when we were chatting, which um, struck me too was, in the process of going through a loan or for a financial product, if you're asked then to be sending over the likes of identification document, that again takes it to another level too. So again, it's just making sure that you, your personal details are, are safe, they're secure, and you know that you're dealing with a legitimate company. And Benny, is, is there anything you would like to add to this? Just want to echo what Lucy said there about some of the measures that consumers can take if they're offered a loan or something online. Generally, the guidance that we would give um, don't engage. So if somebody is contacting you out of the blue about a financial product, then you have to question why that is the case. Uh, we also say um, it's, if it's too good to be true, if it sounds too good to be true, then it more likely is. So just try and stay away and also tune into the language that's being used. So if something is pushing you to do something, if there's a sense of urgency, if you're being asked to complete a specific action, then that's probably going to raise alarm bells. Uh, a bank, a legitimate company is going to give you the time and they're going to give you the space in order for you to make up you know, your mind as a consumer. If you're speaking with somebody and they are trying to hurry you, hassle you, make you feel panicked, then that would be a cause for concern. Um, but yeah, generally, if we're looking at text messages, emails and things like that, again, checking that the, the wording on the website sometimes can be a giveaway. So checking the language that's been used, make sure that you understand what the actual website is. You know, does it have the little lock at, at the front of the bar there? Um, and also when we're speaking to younger consumers, we talk a lot about um, how to where you access your financial information from. And if you are going to deal with a financial institution, have you checked the FCA register? And that's something that not very many young people are maybe aware of, but that's something that we really try to, to highlight to them. If you're going to be going down a rabbit hole and putting your money in a, a company that nobody has ever heard of before, please check that they're fully authorised by the FCA and here's the register and this is how you do it. That's excellent Jenny, thank you so much and I think that's a great point as well about engaging with young people, making them aware of the register because certainly with the likes of social media it is, you know, it's, it's an avenue for scammers to utilise and to make out that by investing a small amount, the returns are fantastic. Um, they often back this up, if you will, by screenshots of people saying, thank you so much for tipping me off on this. Um, I, I was worried it was going to be a scam, but it's not. And look at my bank account now and showing shots of the bank account. And it's all just a lull to encourage people to, to send over their money. Um, and... I think that's something that it's come up in my Instagram a couple of times as well, where I've been contacted, uh, not from anybody on my, my friends list, and it goes into the, the request folder. And it's things like, if I was to give you a thousand pounds, what would you spend it on? And, you know, no catch, just, you know, like, in, in encouraging that sort of dialogue. It's quite interesting. And again, in times of 
desperation if people really are struggling for money sometimes that can seem like a lifeline if they think well I've got X amount in my bank account and almost wishing for it to be true. Absolutely and this doesn't apply to me because I am officially old now but uh, when we did a bit of research a couple of years ago again into how different demographics access financial education and money guidance our younger focus groups talked about looking online and really the key source of information about money and finance for them was online videos. Now obviously that creates a bit of uh, a, an issue for us because we are thinking okay what kind of videos are you accessing? Who's making those videos? And then that it just becomes so important that younger consumers then understand that there is protections in place, there are regulations, and they need to, to deal specifically with organisations that fit within the remit and are, are in the fenced area. And thank you for that as well. I think it would be great to catch up at some point to find out more about some of this research because it sounds really informative and that there's a lot of great um, information coming forward from it. But that's interesting that their younger consumers are more likely to go online and do their research that way. And yeah, watching videos, that is an interesting one. Is it Instagram? Is it TikTok? I'm... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's all of those things, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. And if you want to feel truly old, um, you can read what the what the young folks say, because it's just so alien to maybe what we're used to yeah. uh, and what older demographics are reporting. If they're looking for a financial product, for example, they would like to read about it online. The younger folks were saying that they want to watch a couple of videos. It's fascinating. No, thank you for that. Definitely one that we can catch up on, I think, Jenny. And I think just if we can move on um, to, I say our final question, but it's very, very broad and hopefully we'll have some good discussion around this as well. Um, if consumers are concerned about their financial situation, how can they find trusted information and legitimate support? So like I say, quite a, a, a big question. Um, Lucy, if I can hand over to you, please. Yeah, it is a big question um, and, and, and very wide ranging. I mean, you know, millions and millions of people um, access financial help every year and there's a wide range of free services that are available, um, as well as, you know, tailored support, perhaps from an existing relationship with uh, with an existing um, uh, lender. But I think, uh, you know, to pull out a, a, a few key points, I suppose, um, you know, around managing your financial situation. If you are struggling, there are a number of steps that you can take um, to start managing your, um, your situation. Make a list of the organisations that you need to make a payment to. Um, note down how much you pay, whether you're behind on any payments, you know, household bills, electricity, gas. Um, and if you do find that too difficult to do that on your own, if you're in a real sort of crisis point, there are debt advisors that are able to offer that support for free. Um, seek those out. There's also the Money Helper Debt Advice Locator tool. It can help you find out where to access free debt um, advice near you. Um, and I think going through that process is really important because it's about prioritising your debts when you're in that particular um, situation. Some will be more urgent than others. Um, and once you actually engage with perhaps your, your lender or whoever it is, you may find that they are willing to provide some level of uh, forbearance, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think also really importantly, working out a budget. I know it sounds like a really simple step, but um, working out how much you can pay, how much money you have to, to, to pay your commitments going forward. Again, Money Helper has an online budget planner. Uh, it's a free uh, resource. It's there to use. Um, again, a debt advisor um, could perhaps also um, also be used. Um, but then I think also, you know, I've sort of touched on this briefly, but the tailored support from your lenders, you know, if you are finding it difficult to pay your credit card bill, uh, your mortgage, personal loan, your lender should provide you uh, with support tailored to your individual circumstances. It can be quite a scary step to pick up that phone and engage with them, but they 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 should be doing this. They've all got the 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 you know the relevant um, staff set up to be able to deal with these situations. Contact them as soon as you think you're sort of getting into difficulty. 
just talking to your lender will not affect your credit file. Um, and actually, you will find that they probably can help you. If you do agree any sort of arrangement with them, that could be and probably will be reflected on your credit file. But that would also be the case if you missed your payments. So um, engage upfront. Um, and it, I think also really importantly, if you don't think that your lender is treating you fairly, um, you have the right to complain to them. Um, and also, if you aren't satisfied with their response, obviously you can go to the financial um, ombudsman. Um, like I say, the, the, it might actually be helpful to send out some links to some of those, you know, the, the, the budget plan at all, links through to money helper service. Um, they're free, accessible, um, and I just encourage people to use them. I think that's exactly what we'll do, Lucy. Thank you. And that's such a helpful overview of the help and support that is available. And I just want to come back to what you're saying about engaging with the lender. I think that's so important. And like you're saying, a scary step and one that perhaps people do seek other avenues and almost use that as the last resort. Um, and I think keeping that in mind to have that conversation to see what support is there and just taking that first step um, is is something that I think would would really benefit consumers and even help to bring that peace of mind of what options they have, especially if they're feeling trapped and that there are no, you know, the options are very, very limited for the situation that they're in. Jenny, can I bring you in, please? Is there anything you'd like to add um, from your perspective? Yeah, sure. Um, I would really encourage anybody who's experiencing financial difficulty or have money worries to engage with the free to client advice sector that we have. I might be biased, but we have a really, really fantastic advice sector in Scotland and in the UK generally. So if you need money advice or debt advice, if you've got debts that you're really struggling with, then you can go along and you can get specialist support and advice from a regulated provider and you can get that free of charge and I would just encourage anybody in that situation to do that if you have been the victim of a financial scam one example then we don't only dealing with this you know we don't only have to focus on the scam itself but we know that that has a ripple effect and it might affect your finances for a good few months if not years going forward so really regardless of your situation i think it's always important to reach out and to access advice if required we actually as as well as the money helper resource which i think is fantastic and we refer a lot of people over to that website for general information about personal finance we run a service at Money Advice Scotland where we can take somebody, we can give them general support and then if they need regulated advice, then we can actually set that person up with an appointment with a free advice provider. So people, if they're not sure where to go, they can come to us and then we act as the gateway to getting that free advice. In terms of dealing with lenders, I think that's an excellent point and something that I speak quite a lot about when we're de dealing with people and we're working in uh, community groups. The lenders do have a duty of care towards their consumers and they, they, you know they're not going to uh, hang the phone up on you or demand more money from you. They are legally required and obliged to consider your circumstances and to to provide you with a with care. So I think that that's a really important point and one thing that maybe everybody should take away from today if you are struggling, then as well as seeking professional help and support, you could also consider phoning your lenders and seeing what they could do in terms of support for you. Thanks so much, Jenny. And I think the message that's coming through really strongly is to get advice and don't be afraid to to seek advice and to speak to people and just knowing that there's someone there who's able to listen. And I think sometimes it might be in a situation where things seem so bleak, you can't really think clearly, whereas it just means that someone impartial can give you that little bit of clarity um, to help you through and help you navigate um through through some difficult times i think that's really excellent advice and like i said we'll definitely be sharing the links and I, i'm really keen um to have a look at the different um areas myself and and find out a wee bit more on those um and i think you know just coming back to what you said lucy as well about budgeting i think that is you know it's it's something that 
we speak about, but you know, are, are people actively doing it and monitoring it? Um, and you know, then, then I suppose that comes back to as well going back to checking your bank accounts, your bank statements, and is everything in order? And you know, just helping you keep on track that way. But no, that's been really, really helpful. And then finally, um, just really to say and picking up on your point earlier, Lucy, about illegal money lending. Um, and ju just to say, if you have borrowed money from a loan shark and are feeling trapped, out of control or threatened, you're not alone. You're not in trouble if you have borrowed cash or have been paying back a loan from an illegal money lender. And it's they're the ones who are committing the crime. And what you can do is you can report to the Scottish Illegal Money Lending Unit. And um, there's a special helpline that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they can be contacted on 0800 074 0878. It's been a really informative session today. And for those of you watching, I hope you found this useful. Um, I'd like to thank the panel for joining us and sharing their knowledge and expertise. It's very much appreciated. The discussion doesn't stop here. Um, please do get in touch with any questions you have. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and sign up to our weekly scam share bulletin to keep up to date on the latest scams and how to avoid them. For more information on the campaign itself, visit www.tscott.co.uk. And finally, thanks again to our panel and everyone who's joined us. Have a great day, everyone.